When gaining muscle is the goal, many people go into a bulking phase. And when fat loss is the goal, many people go into a cutting phase. But what if you could do both at the same time? Building muscle while losing fat is not easy, but it is possible in certain scenarios. Now, if you are an advanced athlete that has been training for many years, you typically won't gain noticeable muscle while maintaining a calorie deficit for fat loss. But if you still have a good amount of progress to make in your fitness journey, building muscle while losing fat is a realistic outcome. In today's video, I will discuss different scenarios in which building muscle while in a calorie deficit is possible. I will also discuss science-based methods that most people can use to build muscle while losing fat. If you haven't yet, leave me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so that this video can reach more people and also help more people. And let's dive straight into it by discussing the basic fundamentals that make muscle growth possible. We first need to understand how a calorie deficit impacts your ability to gain muscle. As you probably know, a calorie deficit means consuming fewer calories than your body requires in a day to fuel its daily activities. This forces your body to burn fat for energy. But it also means your body has less energy available to put towards building up tissues like muscle. A simple way you can look at muscle growth is through the lens of protein balance. We have muscle protein synthesis and muscle protein breakdown. As long as your body synthesizes or creates more muscle proteins than it breaks down, you are in a net positive protein balance and you gain muscle. The reason it can be tricky to gain muscle while in a calorie deficit is that a calorie deficit increases muscle protein breakdown and decreases muscle protein synthesis. So muscle growth is negatively affected when you are in a calorie deficit. But this doesn't mean that gaining muscle in a calorie deficit is impossible, it just means that muscle growth in a calorie deficit is slower. And this is confirmed by many studies in which we do see that people gain muscle and lose fat at the same time. For instance, in one study on rugby players, the participants were able to gain roughly 3 pounds of muscle in a 6 week period, while losing 3 pounds of fat. A longer 6 month study on females that lifted weights found that they were able to gain 3 to 4 pounds of muscle while losing roughly 14 pounds of fat. And like this, there are many more example studies showing muscle gain while losing fat is possible. So even though lowering your calories for fat loss does slow down muscle growth, this doesn't mean muscle growth stops altogether, at least for most people. There are three main categories of individuals that I would say can realistically expect to gain muscle while losing fat if they have their training and nutrition in check. Let's look into these three types of people and then I will also go into what I mean by having your training and nutrition in check. First, we have beginner trainees. Your potential for building muscle is quite high when you get started with your fitness journey. The way you can see muscle growth is that it's simply an adaptation to increased training stress. If your muscles are not used to lifting weights and all of a sudden you lift weights consistently, your body has to build up more muscle and strength for you to become efficient in these tasks. Even if you do not optimize every single variable in your training at the beginning process of your fitness journey, you will still see great results because your training is such a novel stimulus to the body. And that's also why we see many of the studies done on body recomposition are done on novice trainees that have less than one year of training experience. If you haven't had one year of at least three times per week consistent resistance training, then gaining muscle while losing fat is very realistic for you. Another scenario in which gaining muscle while losing fat is realistic is in overweight or obese populations. A 2016 study showcases this quite well. When the participants were placed on an aggressive calorie deficit for 4 weeks, they gained 2 pounds of muscle while losing 10 pounds of fat on average. This likely is because overweight individuals have more total body fat to lose, which makes it less likely for your body to tap into its muscle stores for energy. But the flip side then of course also holds true. If you have a low body fat percentage, it will be hard to gain muscle while dropping fat further because there's not much fat to lose, so your body is more likely to also burn some muscle. And the last group of people that can realistically gain muscle while losing fat is those that come from a training break. You may have heard of the term muscle memory, and there's definitely merit to this idea. We know from research that after a training break, regaining muscle and strength occurs more quickly than when you had to gain muscle in the first place. Even if before your break you had multiple years of training experience and now you lost quite a bit of muscle, you keep a sort of epigenetic muscle memory that primes your body for fast muscle regain once you get back into consistent training. This is nice because it encourages you to get back into training after a break. You will be able to see results quickly. So now that we know the scenarios in which gaining muscle while losing fat is realistic, let's look into the key variables you need to have in place if you want to attempt a body recomposition phase. And I will organize this into four key variables. First, we have training for progressive overload. 
As mentioned, muscle growth is an adaptive response to training. As you constantly challenge your muscles to lift more weight and do more repetitions, they will have to adapt by also growing bigger and stronger. It's one thing to get into the gym and do a workout, but we also need to challenge ourselves and improve performance in the gym over time. Of course, we still want to be conscious of form to prevent injuries and get the full benefit of each exercise. But at least three sessions per week focused on progressive overload is fundamental to the entire process. Next, we have an appropriate calorie deficit. And this one can be a bit tricky because if you restrict your calories more to lose fat more quickly, then there's less energy available to be utilized towards muscle growth. While if you have a very small calorie deficit, then your fat loss progress will be slow. So we need to be somewhere in the middle here. A moderate deficit of 15 to 20% is what I'd suggest to most people. This provides a steady fat loss rate while still providing good energy to have quality training sessions. The third key variable is one that we see in nearly every study about gaining muscle while losing fat and that is your protein intake. The research is actually quite simple on this. A low protein intake typically results in muscle loss while a high protein intake helps you at least maintain, if not gain muscle. Next to this, research also shows that a high protein intake increases the amount of fat you lose in the same calorie deficit. So a high protein intake helps with both your fat loss and muscle gain goals. A 2017 systematic review indicates that a daily protein intake of about 0.7 to 1 gram per pound of your body weight is enough for maximizing muscle growth. Also, distributing your protein intake over 3 to 5 servings in a day can help with slightly boosting muscle growth. The fourth and last variable is about sleep, and sleep is an overlooked component, but now we have multiple studies showing that sleep restriction negatively impacts muscle maintenance while dieting. So aim to sleep between 7 to 9 hours per day to support your body recomposition goals. So as a quick summary, gaining muscle while losing fat is possible, mostly in beginner or overweight populations or when you come from a training break. If you want to give body recomposition a shot, make sure you train for progressive overload, have a moderate calorie deficit, consume enough protein and have good sleeping habits. There is of course still a time and place for dedicated bulking and cutting cycles, especially for lean and advanced athletes it can be tough to gain muscle while still trying to get even leaner. So in this case, something like a lean bulk followed by a cutting phase is a viable option and I've actually done a video on it in the past that you can check out. And that is all for today's video. I hope you now have a better idea of when and how muscle gain is possible in a calorie deficit. If you found this video helpful, then leave me a thumbs up. Also subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet, and I will see you in the next video.